So okay guys, I gotta get this out of the way before the video continues. This is all intended for a modified switch, so if you got a switch that is indeed hackable, you can then follow along with this video. If your switch is not hacked or set up to be hacked, do not follow along because the programs that we're about to install on our switch will not work unless your switch has been modified. Now first of all, to actually get Half-Life on our Nintendo Switch, we got to put our SD card in our computer. That is the first step. Now from there, you want to create a folder on the root of your SD card and call it Exash 3 d Hopefully I'm saying that right, but you want to create this folder and then you want to open it up. Now from here, we want to copy the Valve folder over from our Half-Life installation on the PC. Essentially what we're doing here is the exact same thing that we did for Roller Coaster Tycoon in the previous Switch Well Homebrew video. Now unlike that video, I can't really show you guys where to get these files, I don't know the legality of it. However, I happen to own the actual game, so all I did was install the game that I had on DVD, open up the folder, and then dragged over the Valve folder into the Exash 3D folder that we made on the root of our SD card. Now if you are wondering what's in this folder, I'll quickly open it up. And as you guys can see, you should have something that looks a lot like this. If you don't have the files that look like this, do not copy the folder over into Exash 3D, because then it won't work, obviously. But before we back out of here and get the NRO file, which is used to load up this game, we actually need to download a, uh, well, it's not really a mod, it's a graphical fix to get the main menu working for Wall Half-Life. Because when you load the main menu up without the fix, well, the program just won't work or you will have a hard time being able to get into the main game. So what we want to do is download this file, I'll have it in the description down below, and you want to download that then throw that into the root of the Valve folder. Now guys, before we continue, I want to state this yet again, I will have all the files down below that you need, just not the base game itself. Now with that said, once we download that fix, we want to throw it in this folder. If I remember correctly, it's called Extras, but I don't have the internet on hand at the moment, so I can't really remember what I've thrown in here. But yeah, you, you essentially want to throw the fix in here, and then you're done. But if you have any of the other DLC that you want to play for Half-Life, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to set that up today because it requires a little bit more work and I know a lot of you guys just want to do the base game so that's what this video is going to be showing you how to do. So anyway, we should be up to this point. You have the Valve folder thrown in the Exash 3D folder on the root of your Switch's SD card. If you got everything like so, we can then back out to the root of our Switch, then open up our Switch folder. Now from here, we can download our NRO file. I'll have a link down below to where you can get this. And essentially what you want to do is download the latest or whatever version your Switch can handle. I did notice there is some compatibility between 9.1 firmware compared to something like 7.0 firmware. At least that's what I read in the documentation for this program. I haven't seen it personally. I loaded up a really old one into my Switches folder and a really updated one meant for 9.1. And I haven't seen much of a difference at all between these two. However, if you guys see later on in the video that I got two of these uh, Exash 3D programs, that's why. One's older, one's newer. But essentially, you just want to download the Half-Life Exash 3D.NRO and throw that on your Switch or the Exash 3D.Valve NRO, which is the updated one. Anyway, once we got that all done, we can now eject our SD card and begin to, well, throw it inside our Nintendo Switch. Now once the SD card is in the Nintendo Switch, you just want to boot up into whatever modified firmware that you are using. I'm using Atmosphere and Hecatate, so I just boot it up and open up the homebrew menu just by clicking on the gallery icon. Now if you were to scroll over in the homebrew section, you should now see the program, and if you attempt to launch it, you may be greeted with a crash. Now I'm going to quickly explain how to fix this. It's the same kind of deal that happened with the Roller Coaster Tycoon homebrew. We want to boot up in applet motors and not applet mode. I always get the two confused, but we want to boot up into homebrew with more memory available. Now to do this, you just got to click on any game that you have on the screen. 
hold the right trigger, launch it. And keep holding the right trigger until the homebrew menu pops up again. And this time you should have an icon or something in the top right letting you know that you're in the correct mode. Now from here we can click on our half-life vault.nro file that we threw on here and the program will run. Now guys, that's basically it. You got Half-Life running on the Nintendo Switch. No emulation required because it's running through Exash. Now some of you guys may be wondering what I meant by emulation. I mean we don't got to go through an Android emulator on the Switch or stream the game. Just no BS, it's just straightforward and you go right into the game and you're able to play it with native controls. Overall, it's really cool. I haven't played through the game in its entirely, so I don't know how stable it is, but what I could tell from playing for the, like, the first 15-30 minutes is that it plays really well, and I do believe it has mouse and keyboard support, so if you want to plug your Switch up to your dock or just plug in an adapter into your Nintendo Switch, you should be able to actually use native keyboard and mouse controls in this game. Anyway, I haven't tested that personally myself, but I imagine it would be really sweet to use a keyboard and mouse. Anyway guys, with that said, that's basically it for today's video. I'm gonna leave it off here, and if you guys need any help, let me know down below in the comments. But before you go and comment away, check the description. I'll have all files and notes needed to get the program installed, as well as anything I learn along the way. But yeah guys, for now I'm gonna go DTPK signing off. Peace. And make sure that the open RCT2 icon is there. Now before you get all happy, I really love it and hate it. Oh my god, the nuke's going off. I was right. That's Whisper.